Hi, hello everyone. Um, bonjour. <laughs> um, I'm originally Spanish. I live in London, uh, but yes, I was a former MIT Media Lab researcher when the Media Lab had um, their um, it had a partner in Dublin. So, well, I have in London. I have a creative lab where I am researching new materials, uh, wearables, and the Internet of Things to develop products that can communicate what they call public engagement of science and other social issues um, to people. I believe that not only we need to use education and um, museums, etc., to educate people about social issues and science, but I believe there is a better route, a better vehicle, which is use the products that people love consuming. I develop wearables, fashion items, all kind of desirable products, or at least that's my aim, to make sure that these science are transferred to people through the products they consume or the products they decide, they decide to give friends as a gift. Um, so as I said, I have been very lucky to be part at the MIT Media Lab Europe, and I have been working there in smart materials and wearables. But I also have a master's called Material Futures from Central St. Martin, that's a university in London that is very well known, known for uh, fashion and arts. So I kind of uh, feel I'm in between those two areas where I am half a scientist <laughs> and half uh, a designer. Um, and I feel very lucky that today this is the perfect place to be and there is so much that can be done in innovation. Um, most of the time I work in the fashion industry with big brands as well as a consultant and as well I develop interior design products and lately I've been working more and more for advertisement as well. I will show you some examples. I was part of the closing ceremony of the Olympics, always working in big teams. This is not something that one can do alone. Um, and uh, we developed the costumes for the closing ceremony of the Olympics, illuminating costumes. Also, this is a reactive jacket with biometrics. This is for Cadbury. Um, this is also some work for Ugo Boss. And here, an interesting project I had to develop for the BBC where they wanted to film the wedding of the future. It was a children's program, and obviously we did things that light up. They were very cute. The shawl will have a big heart in the back that, were, that was lighting up when people were tweeting about the wedding and things like that that might be quite obvious. Um, and uh, I wanted to do something else that was a little bit more different, so I developed the flowers in front of her chest of the dress. Um, that also were linked to her biometrics, and uh, the flowers will bloom almost naturally when she was getting nervous. Um, I don't know if the video shows very well, so I will just show. I will just show it here, very straightforward because I'm just going to plug it to a battery. But you should be able to see how the flower blooms, and we have talked about these materials already other speakers have been talking about them. So these are materials that already exist and they just need to be used, used more, I believe. Um, so that was a project for the BBC. And then I have worked a lot with Diageo. So this was an, an illuminating inflatable cloud for Guinness. Uh, but now I am working with other parts of Diageo, such as Johnny Walker and Smirnov. We are developing um, billboards, textile billboards that cover buildings that glow without electricity. And this is actually just using a glass material that has been previously widely used in reflective materials, reflective technology. So you should be able to see here, this is a 10 meter long billboard, and you can see how it's glowing just with one LED on the other side of the road. And this LED is triggered by people passing by. And you can see the scale here, because this is another one we did for Smirnoff. And you can see me there uh, work, working on the area of the logo. So that one was, that one was 20 meters to cover an entire building. Uh, I will now move. I'll go back to that. Oops. 
Um, now that we are talking about sustainability, which I think that is the game changer of putting smart materials into smart products, instead of thinking that everything has to work through electronics and batteries, we can really think differently when we use smart materials. And I was going to ask someone in the public to come here to show them the piece I'm going to talk you about today. If anyone can come up here very quickly, just to tell me what they think this might be. I don't know if anyone can see it. Anyone want to come up? <laughs> I think we have a microphone here. It's working. I don't know if it's on. I hope it's on. Yeah? Hello? OK. It's okay. On. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to say what you think this is. Um, we can pass it around as well. A for necklace anyone to with a cute rock. <laughs> a necklace? OK. Yeah. Is it something you will see yourself wearing for? Yeah, sure. You could Why give not? us a gift. OK, there it is. Yeah? OK, so what do you think it does? I think it glows. You think it glows yeah. in terms of like illuminating, or yes. you think well, it like glows? It. Why will you think it glows? Do you see any batteries? Do you see any? Um, I don't, but it, I mean, it, it has a rock on it, so okay. maybe it reacts with something. OK, well, feel free to pass it around, and okay. people can see it. So, OK, I'm showing here a product that is actually uh, not developed by myself, but it's an example that I'm going to examine when we're talking about sustainability. This is a jewelry device, what you see here, that makes you aware of sun exposure. So this device is going to analyze the UV rays on the atmosphere, on the air, and it's going to make you aware of it. Now, the problem I see with this is a variety of problems. Is the price. It's an expensive piece. It is the way it's produced, and it's also the way you're going to get it discarded. It runs with batteries, obviously, and it also requires a Bluetooth device to connect to your phone, which means in order for you to know if you need to be aware, if, if you need to protect yourself from sun exposure, you need to be interrupted. Is a, I, I find this um, part of technology quite intrusive, where you actually have to remember to check your phone so that your phone actually tells you the reading of the device, and then the reading might not even be something that you totally understand or you totally feel familiar with. Um, so for this project, which is I wanted to develop something that makes you aware of UV exposure, but that it was um, in a way more familiar to us, I was inspired by biomimicry, and I thought there is many ways in that materials, even our own skin, responds um, to sun exposure. So I looked into a chemical that it's already out there, it's widely used, and you have seen it in sunglasses that change color um, when you go in the sun. And I just wanted to, to do some more research on this. And I looked into in which ways this chemical has been used before. And it's usually linked to plastics and sometimes to some glass. But nothing has been done that is truly uh, desirable or luxurious. It's mainly pieces that are very, very functional. And I thought it would be just so beautiful, perhaps, it, uh, if I could use this material to um, make it look like something that came out of nature that maybe looked like a crystal. And that's what I set myself to do, and I developed these crystals that react to UV rays. I have some other larger ones here as well. Happy to pass those around as well. Um, so the strength of the color, the depth of the color, and the speed of change is what's going to make you aware of how strong the UV rays are in that moment. And the reason you don't need much more data is very simple. is because no matter how much someone might tell you if you need sun protection or not, in the end, it all depends on your own genetics, on your own type of skin. If you have put cream that morning, it depends on so many things that I just wanted to create a piece that was beautifully making you aware of something that is otherwise transparent to your own eyes. There it is. And in a way, it's kind of telling you to enjoy the sun, because when it changes color, it's, it's quite a beautiful experience. Enjoy the sun, but just in a wise way. Um, the way it's done, sorry, I was going to say as well, is simply a salt solution, a saturated salt solution that then crystallizes. Now, the crystals are water-soluble. You can see them there being created. Um, and then they are um, coated with a biodegradable coating. There they are. 
Um, I'm going to move on just quickly. I have five minutes left uh, to tell you a little bit about the processes I use when I come up with these ideas. In general, I am inspired by two things. Either I am inspired by an issue that I want to tackle, or I am inspired by a new technology or a new material that I have discovered um, or I have come across it. And in both ways, I analyze how is this issue being tackled before and how not, or how has this material been used before and how not. And then that way I start putting briefs to myself. We have also been talking a lot, a lot the rest of the speakers, into how what's happening with mass manufacture. And, um, and here, for example, we have a map of how this computer is being made. And I believe the more we use smart materials, the game changing also happens here in a way that we can develop materials from scratch locally. So not only we need to orchestrate this incredible use of human and material resources all around the world, they travel all around the world, then they get to your door, and unfortunately, most of the things that we design end up here. And many people will uh, blame this into the consumers. But I actually believe that it's us as designers who have this responsibility to make sure that the products are not forgotten by ensuring that it is us who have not forgotten to create meaning. So I make sure in my, in my creative lab in London that everything we create has some kind of um, social purpose in the background. Um, the last part of my method is also very straightforward. I believe that what we need to do with technologies is not only to innovate in our means, this is for me quite obvious already, by the means I mean materials, tools, and skills. Here is a very simple example. So you will need these materials, these tools, and this skill to create this product. The more you can innovate in those three areas, the more you can innovate in the final product. This changes with 3D printing because we have here a totally different kind of material, different kind of tools, and a different kind of steel, a skill. What happens today is that probably no longer you can find these three skills in one person. You need an expert of these materials, these tools, and this programming. Um, so more than ever, I think the key for innovating in any area is collaboration and especially multidisciplinary co collaboration. And all the projects that I start in the lab are always involving a wide variety of, of backgrounds. Now, I believe many people are working already in these three areas, and technology can innovate all of them. And what I really wonder is if the next stage is to innovate in the meaning, which is to make sure that technology is not only used for the sake of it, but because it has to be not only meaningful to the consumer, that's quite obvious, especially for brands when I work with brands, uh, but definitely for society and for the planet. And the interesting part today is that being, being meaningful to society and to the planet also means being meaningful to the consumer. So it's a win-win. Um, this kind of um, approach has allowed me to, me to win many, many awards since the beginning of my career, uh, being last year in the UK one of the uh, top three um, women in tech, innovator women in tech. Um, so now I have a, a leading role in um, helping other women feeling confident about working in a technology environment. Um, I will finish a little bit with the, my role when I work with advertisement for brands. And I make sure uh, this concept of ensuring you have innovative means and innovative meaning um, filters through what I call the prosumer journey. So when you are going to discover a product, acquire a product, or even unbox a product. All of these are um, situations that a prosumer, not a consumer, it's called a prosumer because it's someone that is proactively going to be contributing to your brand. Um, the way you design all of these stages will filter a lot through their everyday life and the way they share they share these experiences with their friends, with their social media. So I make sure innovation and meaning are part of every stage of the journey of the prosumer. And also, I make sure that the journey doesn't finish here. Many brands will 
be happy just to make sure that someone has bought the product and engaged with it, and they don't mind if it's discarded soon afterwards, because obviously they have cashed already. Now, I ensure that I talk to brands to make sure that anything that they develop pass to the next stages, which then ensures this kind of a snowball effect where the innovative means and meanings you are developing feedback through the verification of the users. Now, anyway, your product at some time will and it will reach the point of loss of interest. And then at that point, we analyze if it has been because the means are too old, we need to re-engage with the means, or because the product is no longer meaningful. Um, I will leave now with, oh, yes, sorry. <laughs> I wanted to mention as well that with all of these, um, well, with my experiences, my favorite hacks and all of these, I am sharing them now every week on a YouTube channel. The channel is called Joe's Team because I am trying to, to make people see that maybe the key for innovation is integrating the A of the arts and design into the STEM, which is the science, technology, engineering, and maths. So I integrate the arts and design in these through videos that I'm doing every Thursday. So please, please come and have a look. Join me in the conversation. And now, well, talking about conversation, I'm open for any Q&A. And in the background, there is going to be the promotional video of the jewelry. Thank you very much. I don't know how. <laughs> Are you going to help me here? Is there is it any questions from, I think later there is going to be a panel about how to start your business and all of this. So I have gone from being a researcher to then stepping into bringing some products into the market, uh, continuing my research independently when I detached from the MIT Media Lab. Um, and now I also work with brands, um, helping them generate products that are more sustainable and generating advertising campaigns that are more engaging. If there is any question in any of those areas, just let me know. Yeah, you're going to take on? I'm going to take the opportunity. French people are so shy. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so really? first, of all, first of all, congratulations on your Thank work. You. It's, a, it's really amazing. I, I really get surprised by nowadays, companies like this would take Tens of people, hundreds of people. How can you manage to do this all, all on your own? Well, um, it's well, in each individual project happens with um, with a specific freelancers. Uh, it happens a lot that people that really want to do forward-thinking things uh, don't easily fit in a full-time job. So I have I actually find many many people that are super interesting. They're doing their own thing and they happily join projects here and there because they don't have like a full-time job. And that's the kind of people I work with. Okay, let let me take that idea because we're going to have a later later a conversation with Elena. And I want to talk about flexible teams, how the corporations yeah. of the future are going to look like. People working in large organizations, you're going to have to get used to teams where full-time employee, part-time employee, uh, contractor don't, no longer are separate things, but are yeah. all mixed together. And I'm going to use this uh, opportunity that I'm here with Elena to also say that we are reaching the end of this uh, first section. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break until 11.50. There's some food outside, and there's time for you guys to talk and meet each other, because there's a lot of interesting people in the audience. So see you in a few minutes. Okay.